I'm Steve Cotton, the Director of Broadcasting for the Marshall University Athletic Department. I have been the play-by-play uh, -play announcer at Marshall since 1996, so uh, wrapped up 25 years as the play-by-play -play guy. The Marshall's history as, uh, in, in the athletic department in terms of broadcast dates back to 1927, October of 1927, radio station WSAZ, which today is uh, WRVCAM, the call letters have changed, but that's the same station. Uh, the station moved to Huntington in 1927, and in October of 1927, the athletic department uh, and the athletic director, Legs Hawley, came to an agreement with the owner of the radio station to start broadcasting Marshall sporting events. So in October of 1927, there was a football game between Marshall and the Concord Mountain Lions, and uh, that was the first time the herd was on the air. That was actually the first sporting event in the state of West Virginia that was broadcast. Uh, the station's staff announcer was a guy named Beckley Smith, and Smith uh, what sort of anchored that broadcast, but they had a Marshall student named Pat Patterson, Harold Patterson, went by Pat. He ended up being the star. He was the sports expert. He became the sports broadcaster for WSAZ, and a few years later, uh, took a job at a radio station in Pittsburgh and actually became a broadcaster for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, so he was the, the first guy to become well-known as a sports broadcaster at Marshall. He was followed by a guy named Fred Burns, a Marshall graduate who uh, did the radio broadcast for about 10 years and then moved into newspapers, stayed here. He was the sports editor of the Huntington Herald Dispatch and uh, became very well known nationally as a golf writer. Uh, so when he went to newspapers, a guy named Gene Kelly, uh, not the movie uh, star and dancer, but another <laughs> Gene Kelly, took over. He wasn't here very long. He left, uh, got drafted, went into the military in World War II, but he came back and became a broadcaster for the Philadelphia Phillies for about 10 years. Uh, very famous baseball broadcaster. A guy named Jack Bradley replaced him. Bradley uh, was the Marshall radio guy for about 10 years. He went on to take a job in San Francisco and uh, became famous nationally as a boxing announcer for guys like Joe Lewis and uh, Jack uh, Rocky Marciano and uh, a lot of the, the great boxers in the 1950s were, uh, he, he was the voice of many of those great fights. He was followed by another guy who went on to become famous nationally. Jim Thacker was the broadcaster here from the 1940s, or rather 50s into the 60s. He left here and uh, went to Charlotte and became the voice of ACC sports. He was uh, famous along with Billy Packer. Thacker and Packer was a famous broadcast crew for many years. And uh, he did NFL games, did the Masters Golf Tournament. So uh, another in the line of a lot of Marshall guys who went on to become famous nationally. You've had a couple of others in more recent years. Uh, Bill Roth was here in 1987, was only at Marshall one year took a job at Virginia Tech when the Marshall Athletic Director became the AD at Virginia Tech and just took him along. Bill's in the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame and uh, is uh, an ESPN broadcaster these days after he's retired from his day-to-day -day radio job at Virginia Tech. A guy named Wes Durham uh, is the voice of the Atlanta Falcons and uh, does ACC Network stuff. Stan Cotton was my immediate predecessor here. His name's spelled C-O-T-T-E-N, so uh, no relation, but a friend of mine, he left here in 1996, took the, the job at Wake Forest University. He's been there for 25 years, and that's the time I've been here at Marshall. It has been an amazing time to be at Marshall. I picked a great time to start, or Stan picked a great time to go to Wake Forest and let me get his job. Uh, the, the first football game I did at Marshall, the first touchdown pass I called was uh, in the ball was in the hands of Randy Moss. So that was a good time to start. The 1996 Thundering Herd went 16-0 and uh, won the 1AA National Championship, was one of the most dominating teams, I would say the most dominating team in uh, 1AA history. My, I think, sixth or seventh basketball game that year, Keith Veeney made 15 three-pointers against Moorhead State. That is still the NCAA record for the most three-pointers made in the Division I game against a Division I opponent. So uh, it was quite a beginning, and uh, it's been just 
pretty much uh, a dream job for me the whole time since. A lot of great games, a lot of great memories. But uh, when you start off with Randy Moss and Chad Pennington and Byron Leftwich, and you have uh, great basketball players in that area like J.R. Van Hoos and Tamar Slay and Cornelius Jackson and uh, Travis Young, that got things off to a great start. So uh, been very blessed to be here. There have been some amazing games. Uh, top of the list, uh, a couple of football games. You have uh, 1999, Mid-American Conference Championship game. It was a different world then. The MAC only got one bid to go to a bowl game. And in the championship game, Marshall went into that game uh, with a perfect season and was ranked 12th in the nation, but found itself behind Western Michigan 23 to nothing in the third quarter. And if Marshall loses that game, the Thunder and Herd's going to be ranked in the top 15 in the country and not go to a bowl game. Marshall uh, had a huge comeback. Chad Pennington capped it off with a touchdown pass with just four seconds left to, to win the game. And uh, so that was amazing. Another one a couple of years after that in the football side, Byron Leftwich in the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama after the 2001 season. Marshall's behind at halftime 38 to eight. An amazing comeback, uh, one at 64 to 61 in double overtime. Threw a touchdown pass, Byron, to Josh Davis uh, for the game winner in the second overtime. Byron passed for 576 yards that day, just an, an amazing performance. And being behind 38 to 8, uh, I talked to a guy years later who went to the game, made the trip, sat there in Mobile, got so mad at halftime he left, got in his car, drove, spent the night in Chattanooga, didn't know until he got up the next morning that Marshall came back and won the ball game. So that was an all-time amazing run. And then on the basketball side, uh, the uh, trip to Frisco, Texas, to win the Conference USA tournament, and then go on to San Diego and uh, knock off Wichita State and uh, make, make it to the second round of the tournament was some of the best moments of the couple, best couple of weeks of my entire career. John Elmore, C.J. Burks, Rondell Watson, all those guys doing amazing things. Jared West, Jansen Williams were youngsters on that team just getting started and uh, gave Marshall fans some of the, the best memories they're ever going to have.